Hey guys, uh, so I'm Joe McMenamin, I'm an artist based in Fielding and um, this year I am teaching a couple of workshops for the, um, the Manutu Arts Trail. Um, so my workshop is called Marketing for Artists and um, because of the lockdown what I've decided to do is um, shoot a video here for you guys to watch and then we're going to run a Zoom call uh, for sort of one to two hours at the most. Um, you know, everyone can get a bit of Zoom fatigue at the moment. Um, where you get a chance to kind of answer some of the questions I'm going to bring up, um, discuss it amongst the group, and yeah, and hopefully, yeah, thrash out some of the ideas that, that I'm going to be talking about today. Cool. So um, just a little bit of background about me, if you if you've haven't met me before. Um, I moved to Fielding about nearly five years ago now. Um, I lived down in Wellington before that where I was a high school art teacher um, for 14 years. And then, yeah, my family and I moved up to Fielding. My wife got a job here at the local church and, um, and we moved our three kids up here. And yeah, when we moved to Fielding, I left teaching and became a full-time artist. And uh, managed to pay the bills, make a full-time wage um, for the last nearly five years. Um, so yeah, I've got a bit of stuff to share kind of about that process and about that journey that I've been on. Um, but as you'll see, um, I love teaching as well. So yeah, I, I love explaining things and kind of helping people. And I have a real passion for um, creativity and helping people in the community kind of be more creative. So um, yeah, hopefully you guys get some, some value out of what I'm sharing with you today. Um, I'm going to be looking down a bit, just sort of um, looking at my notes and, and uh, yeah, trying to cover all the different things that we're going to talk about. So over today's session, we're going to talk about kind of um, maybe f uh, four or five different sections. Uh, we're going to talk about mindset, first of all, then building your brand style and story as an artist. Um, we're going to talk about how do you sell art. It's a pretty good topic. Um, then we're going to talk quite a bit about online marketing and how you use you know online platforms to sell art. Um, other ways to make money from art that isn't just about selling it. And then we're going to kind of wrap it up. Um, yeah, wrap it up with a bit of a conclusion and just talk about um, how to value yourself more as an artist. Cool. All right, let's dive straight in, guys. So. Uh, hopefully um, you've got a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil so you can just like jot down some notes and I'm going to be asking you some regular questions through this. So it might be a good idea if you've got the video just to, um, when, when I pose a question, just to pause it and while it's still fresh in your mind, maybe just write down a few ideas um, and then we'll come back to those ideas. You're going to bring those notes with you when, when we have the Zoom call and, um, and we can sort of chat more about them. Cool. So mindset. What are you making art for? Like, why are you even making art? Is it for fun? Totally fine if that's what you're doing it for. Um, are you trying to make a little bit of money so you can just buy a bit more paint, buy more art materials? Or are you trying to make proper money, you know, make a part-time or even a full-time living from art? Where do you kind of fit in that now? And also, you know, where do you want to be in the future? Is this just a hobby for you or is it sort of a more serious, um, you know, potential income stream or, or business that you want to explore? Cool. So one of the things that um, was quite important to me when I, when I went full time as an artist was that um, I think about my art practice as a business. So I try and put some really strong kind of business models and um, yeah, business ideas around it. And, and for me, that's been helpful because it means that I don't sort of think about it like a hobby, you know, like something really enjoyable, even though it is really enjoyable to do, I think about it in more sort of black and white terms. So one of the things that um, if you've ever studied business or you, you talk to someone who has a business, one of the things that's really important is business planning. And probably if you're, if you're like me, you love the art making, but the administration, not so much. You know, there, there are some strange sort of artists out there who love doing admin as well. Um, but uh, most of us probably prefer to be making art and being creative. Um, but business planning is one of those things that is super important. And I wrote a business plan um, um, back when I was still teaching 
and when I started to sell a little bit of my own art, started to make a little bit of money from it, and I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. Let's try and put down all of, the, all of my ideas in one place and you know, see how they develop. Um, and a good business plan, there's lots of templates online. Um, I'm actually going to um, send you guys out, well, see if I can attach it to this email, um, something called the, uh, where is it? The business model canvas and this is a really simple one page that you can print out and you can like it just shows you all the different parts of the business and you can sort of um, think about those things so like you know your expenses your income like where is money coming from what is it costing you um, you know who are you working with um, what are the resources you need to do that business those kinds of things so I will um, I'll hopefully I'll be able to get that that template to you um, but I guess in a, um, at a starting point, if you've never done a business plan yourself, then just really start out and think, what are your goals? You know, what do you want to achieve? Um, write down, uh, you know, a short-term goal. What do you want to achieve by the end of the year with your art business? What do you want to achieve in two years? What do you want to achieve in five years? Back when I was teaching art, um, at high school, my dream was to be a full-time artist, or see if I could do it, first of all. Um, but then my dream was to open an art studio and gallery, where I could kind of work in a shop, have a little gallery space, and yeah. And so if you, that was actually my sort of 20-year plan to, have, to be at that point, and um, achieve that in three years since, well, two years since moving to Fielding. Um, and if you've been into my art studio in, in Fielding, you would have seen... It's a really cool space and an old shop, um, and that was yeah, that was super exciting for me to be able to afford to have a public space. Um, and yeah, you you might not have that. You might just want to have like a small studio space that's not public that you just want to work in, or you might just want to have you know you want to be able to buy like a nice easel that you can have in a spare bedroom at home. But have a little think about those goals. So pause the video, write down some goals, and just dream big. You know, especially for the long-term ones, just dream as big as you want, um, and then we'll yeah we'll come back to those um, during the the Zoom call. All right, cool. Um, the other thing that's important about mindset is to just be really aware of your strengths and weaknesses. You know, what are you really good at, and what are you not so good at? And I guess. You know, it's it's like, I mean, for me, admin is something that I really struggle with. I don't really like the whole financial thing. And so, you know, I got this program called MYOB, which is really simple. I just have a bank account and, art, and money goes into the bank account. And then it just automatically um, comes out on MYOB. And then you just, you know, you just say whether it's an income or an expense. And it comes out with all the tax stuff at the end. So, you know, simple little programs or things like that. Um, can be super super helpful if you are making money or even if you have someone in your family or a friend who can help you with admin then that's that's quite a massive thing as well um, but think about what are your strengths and weaknesses you know how do you like to work um, I <laughs> I had this idea explained to me a couple of years ago and it just really resonated with me and that there that was that there are two kinds of schedules there, uh, there is the manager's schedule and there's the creative schedule. And the manager's schedule works on an hourly basis. And so every single hour, the manager is booking in meetings and appointments and things that they have to do. So they work on an hour, hour, hour. Oh, yep, yep, you want to come and see me? Great, I can fit you in at 10 o'clock. You know, oh, yeah, I'll do that at 11. So boom, boom, boom. But the creative schedule works on half days. And so you go, okay, cool, I've got half a day to work on this painting or half a day to do this thinking creatively. And what happens is if you end up with an appointment in the middle of that half day, it's like, it's ruined. You know, I can't, I can't make up this morning because I've got to meet someone at 10 o'clock. And even though that's only one hour in the whole morning, that's just taken all my headspace up for that, for that particular time. So I found that really helpful to kind of realize that yeah, it's, there's two different kinds of scheduling. And so, so when I do it now, I've got days when I'm like, cool, I'm creating. 
I'm making art on these days and I'm going to be focused even for a whole day I'm just going to just do one thing um, and there's other days where I'm going to have appointments and I'm going to kind of you know meet people at, at different times um, during that day and you just go I'm not going to be able to make anything that day but that's fine so that was really interesting um, for me um, yeah and I think it's interesting as well that the idea about creativity and the mindset around creativity um, I don't know how you guys are finding the lockdown this time around, whether you're finding it to be a creative time for you or, or maybe not. Um, I found the first lockdown last year to be really uncreative. I felt really unmotivated. I didn't really make anything for that whole time. Um, other people found it really great. So kind of think about what do you need? Like what are the conditions that you need to be creative, you know, to have a creative mindset? And then um, the last thing I'll say just about mindset is I guess um, there's a balance here between um, finding out what you enjoy making and also what sells, you know, because you could just make whatever and if, if money's not an issue, then that's fine. You can just make any kind of art that you feel like. But if you do want to try and make some money, you have to you have to think about what is going to sell, what is actually what style or what's you know size or price point or all these different things so you have to find a balance and I don't think you can go too far one way if you're just making stuff that sells you're going to start to resent it and you're not going to enjoy it creatively if you just start doing stuff that you enjoy making maybe it won't sell I mean the perfect world is you do it both at the same time but um, that's quite hard to achieve as well so just think about that balance um, in terms of your mindset as well so yeah, if you if any, if that brought up any ideas for you, maybe pause the video here and just jot down some ideas. Um, you know, maybe write down some of your strengths and weaknesses. What are you really good at doing in your art business, and what do you really suck at? And just put those down, and just be able to look at them later on, and just notice what it is that you're good and bad at. Okay, cool. So, thanks guys. Um, thanks for keeping on watching if you're still here. Um, so we're going, to, um, we're going to move on to the second section now. So the second thing we're going to talk about is building your brand story in style. Alright, so you might not think about branding in terms of um, your art. And I guess, yeah, branding is kind of a business term or like a design term even. Um, but a brand is just like when you look at something, when you look at an organization, you know, you just want everything to sort of be really cohesive, to be really like fit well together. So yes, a logo is part of a brand, um, a style, it can be a color scheme. You probably notice um, like if you go on Instagram and you look at um, some Instagram accounts, they have a very like consistent color theme through the whole thing um, and that's that's kind of a branding thing um, yeah you go into say you go um, clothes shopping and you go into a certain shop and there'll be like the music the look the the st staff that come and talk to you all of those things are sort of part of the brand okay so I guess yeah what, what it is, it's just worth thinking about that for yourself. Now there are two kinds of brands that you can have as an artist. And one of them I find is, is what I do and it's a lot easier than another thing. So there's two kinds of brands. One is an external brand where you have an organization or I guess a business name or you know a, a name really that isn't your name. Okay, so it might be, um, you know, um, the pet portrait guy, for example, you know, so um, Pet Portraits Limited. So that that name or that brand could be owned by anyone, you know, potentially doesn't have your name in it. So it could be owned by anyone, um, but it's a lot harder to make a connection for people between a person or sorry for between a brand that is, you know, kind of um, cold and impersonal than it is to make a a connection with a personal brand. So my brand is Joe McMenamin. It's my name. Um, and it's a lot easier to say, this is me, this is my art, 
this is my name, you know, everything that I do comes under my business, my one business and my one brand. And it's quite kind of, um, quite kind of clear. So if you've got a different name for your art business, then just have a think about that and think about whether, you know, that is something that's important to you. Um, so the advantage of having a separate name is that in the potentially you could sell it, you know, or you could bring other people in to work on it. But the reality of that is that that's quite hard to do and you need to be at quite a big scale to actually do that. So it's, I, you know, in my opinion, it's better to, to make it about yourself. And the thing that's, um, thing that's important with that as well is that every, every um, good brand has a story. And storytelling is something that is so important in, in marketing and branding and advertising now. Um, and, you know, big companies spend millions and millions of dollars trying to tell these stories, which um, try and make us feel a certain way about something. You know, like look at an insurance advert or, you know, Air New Zealand or the All Blacks or whatever it is, whatever company it is, they're trying to tell us the story about themselves. Now, You've got an advantage because if you've got a personal brand and you're an artist, you have a story. There's this, you know, some journey that you've been on in your life that's led you to this point where you're making some art. And so what you have to be able to do is be able to tell that story. You know, what makes you unique? How can you package your story in a way that's like, you know, interesting and engaging and compelling? So this is quite a tough one to do yourself because you're so immersed in your own story. So it might be something that you could chat to someone who you know well and they can help kind of write that for you or extract that. You know, think back to some of the things that were really important to you. You know, part of my story that's really important is that I was a high school art teacher. You know, that kind of gives me, you know, people know they have an experience of what an art teacher is. Um, that kind of gives me a whole lot of um, knowledge and experience. And then I, I left teaching to become an artist. And so there's that, for me, there was that sort of jumping off point, which has been really exciting. Um, but it doesn't have to be like that. It could be that you grew up on a farm, you know, and you were really inspired by the landscape around you. Or something. Something that is, that is your unique story. Okay? So this is going to be a bit of a tough one. And here's where the challenge is going to come in, guys. Um, I am going to ask you to tell us your story in like one minute. Okay? It could just be like where you're from, where you grew up, you know. But try and just really get it really succinct and really simple. So you, I want you to really write your story in a way that makes me interested and draws me into your art. Cool. So we're going to um, go around the Zoom and when we do the Zoom call, we're going to tell each other our story. And it might, it probably won't be like really finished and polished, but what it'll be is by telling it, that will be really helpful for you to kind of define it and figure out what is, what is engaging about that story. All right. So cool. So that's your challenge. So pause the video, have a bit of a think, write down a little bit of your story and then, um, it's probably going to be a bigger job to go back later on and really unpack it and, and try and do that. Part of your story might be like, what do you believe in? Um, or what are you interested in? Like, what's important to you? Yeah, those kinds of things. All right. Okay, a bit of coffee. Cool. Okay. We're doing well. So let's move on to number three. How do you sell art? How do you sell art? Have you sold any art? How does it, how does it start? Um, you know, for me, it was, um, I was just working on a few random pieces in the classroom when I was teaching and, um, my high school art teacher that inspired me, Darren George, um, who's a, an artist uh, down in Christchurch, he um, always had a painting on the go in the classroom. And it was always inspiring to be able to see kind of what he was working on. So I tried to do that when I was teaching as well. 
Um, and you know, I'd have um, maybe one of my workmates might say, "Oh, that's really cool. Can I can I buy that?" Or, "Oh, can you do me? Oh, you do paintings of, you know, this. Can you do one for me for a birthday present or something like that?" So that's kind of, you know, that might be your story as well. How that sort of started to happen. But but where did you sell your first piece of art? Some of you may not have sold any art, and that's fine as well. Um, yeah, you're probably wondering how do you do it. <laughs> um, so I guess that sort of like personal connection is really cool, and that can sort of start you on the journey a little bit and give you a bit of a, a leg up, a bit of a help, you know, for a few people who know you already who want to buy your work or want to support you as an artist. So that's a really good starting point, but you really have to try and move past those like personal relationships and out into the wider community, the wider public. So um, the traditional way of selling your art is to be represented by a gallery. And how that works is that an art gallery um, might approach you or you might approach them and they would say, yes, I will exhibit your art and I'll take a commission if it sells. And so some places might charge 30% um, commission, um, some 25, up to sort of 40% commission. So quite a high percentage of that, that sale of that artwork is going to the gallery. And fair enough, because the gallery is finding the customers. They are you know, um, advertising your work, putting it out there. Um, they're representing you. And so that traditional model can work. Traditionally for um, kind of you know higher end artworks, and you know if you were going to buy like quite a really well known artist, then you would probably buy it from a well known gallery. Um, but there's been a real shift in the last sort of five to ten years of buying directly from the artist, and um, you know I think that probably coincides with um, social media and the online world and how. Um, people are so much more, um, you know, contactable now. I, I was listening to a podcast the other day, I was going for a walk, and um, it was an American podcaster and an American artist, and they were just like chatting about all this stuff, quite well known, quite a big following on um, Instagram. So they mentioned the Instagram, so I just went into there and, you know, looked at their work, liked some of their work, and then I just messaged her and said, hey, I just heard a podcast from you that you were on, um, it was just really inspiring, um, so I just wanted to let you know. And she replied to me and said, hey, thanks, you know, it's so cool that you're in New Zealand and you're, you're listening to my podcast. And it's just so strange to me that we can, like, reach out to someone in another country, another time zone and everything, and they can reply. And you have, like, a conversation with that person. So... You know, we're sort of in an unprecedented time of personal connection with artists. And so, you know, my first thought is if I see a really cool piece of art, my first thought isn't like, oh, what gallery are they represented by? It's more like, oh, who are they? Can I see some of their stuff online? Um, oh, I love this. You know, can I ask them about their work? Can I sort of follow them? If I want to buy something, I would just message directly to them and say, hey, I want to buy this or go on their website and say hey I want to buy this um, yeah so that's the kind of other the other side is to be able to sell directly to your customers and that that requires um, some things so we're going to talk about online marketing in the next section but um, you know I think that's probably the main the main way that that these things are going yes gallery representation can be good but I think Selling directly is where it's like kind of easier and more um, sustainable. So um, we'll just have a quick chat about. Um, oh, actually, the question for that for that section is just: um, Do you have any work in galleries? Have you ever been in a gallery exhibition, like a group show or a solo show? Um, how did it work for you? Did you sell any art? Yeah, so start to think about some of those and we'll come back to that question when we have the Zoom meeting. Um, okay, we're going to talk about pricing your art. So this is a, this is a good old um, chestnut of a conversation. Um, how do you price your work? How do you price your work? How do you decide 
how much to put on your work. Question for you. One way to do it is to work out how long it took you to paint, what was the cost of materials, and what's your profit margin. Put those things together, that's your price. Yeah? Some people do it on a, on a size basis. So they have a per square centimeter or per square inch price. So, you know, it's this much for this size, and then as it gets bigger and bigger, it just scales up in price. Um, I, I do things a little bit differently to that. I, have, I do have a basic idea that the larger the work, the more expensive it is. Not necessarily because it takes a lot more time, but just that it has more value, more perceived value. Okay, And I guess that's probably the key point here, is how much is your artwork worth to your customer? You know, what's the right amount of money? And, you know, you've been to an exhibition where you've seen someone, um, you've seen some art on the wall and you've gone, man, that is really cheap. Like, super cheap. Too cheap. Why is that artwork so cheap? You know, why is that oil painting $100? That doesn't make sense to me. And then you've also seen artwork that's really expensive. You know, why is that little painting like $5,000? That... That seems strange. Why, you know, why is it so expensive? And, um, you know, I mean, obviously, in the upper levels of art, there's, um, you know, really well-known artists who can get lots of money, sort of like, you know, 10, 15, $20,000 for artworks. And you get into the point where it's like um, an investment. So, you know, that piece of art is well-known. Maybe the artist is dead and there's, you know, like a limited number of them or whatever, but it's a good investment. It's not going to go down in value. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about kind of, um, you know, beginning or early career artists who are trying to, um, you know, figure out how much their art is worth. So, um, yeah, so one thing I would say, so, yeah, so I guess the, the main thing I'm trying to say is that thinking about what are, pe what are people prepared to pay for art? And for me, um, I have a few different price points, so I like to have, um, I, you know, I don't sell any original work really that's under $500, and then that $500 to sort of $800 or $1,000, that's sort of like a, a range in the sizes, and then I'll have some bigger stuff too, which is maybe up $1,500 or $2,000. I have sold, my most expensive piece was $2,500, it's a really big piece, but I felt for me that was kind of like the ceiling of what I was able to sell for. And so, yeah, so I guess um, there's, a, there's an equation there too, is that, you know, if you sell your work for $10,000 and you only sell one piece a year, compared to if you sell for $500 and you sell, you know, and you sell, what, 20 pieces a year. So it's kind of about how much can you make, do you want to make, and... How likely is it that you're going to find a customer who's who's happy to pay the price that you set? What I would say is important, and especially early on, is that I started off, you know, lowish, and then slowly built up. So as I sold more work, I put more, a higher price on it. So it went up slowly over years. And so I guess, um, you know, that's something that is important, is that as you become more well-known, as you sort of sell more art, you can put your prices up. Um, people, when they see an artwork that's so cheap, they, they kind of wonder, they don't really think, oh yeah, cool, it's a bargain. They sort of think, what is wrong with it? You know, why is this so cheap? And so I wouldn't, I would be very careful about sort of undervaluing um, your, your artwork, especially original artwork. So I guess to just wrap that, that corridor up is just to say, um, I think it's a good idea to price at, you know, the level that your customers are happy to pay for. I also think it's a good idea to have um, a few pieces that are more expensive and um, that way, you know, there's something to aim for and sometimes people will just have lots of money and they will, um, you know, be able to come out and say, yep, I'll have your most expensive piece of art. Um, one thing that I found helpful a while ago um, to realize was that I am not my customer. And, you know, if I look at a painting and I say, 
you know, if I look at my painting and I say, uh, I don't know if I'd spend that much money on it. Um, that, that's not a good way to do it because I am not buying art in the same way that other people are buying art. And people who are not an artist, you know, they just look at a piece of art and if they have money, they'll say, great, I'm going to buy it. It's worth this much to me. And so, yeah, don't devalue yourself because you think, oh, I wouldn't pay that much for it. Cool. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about that sort of um, idea of valuing yourself. And we're going to talk another, uh, about another idea, um, which is to actually sell prints of your art or separate kind of prints and other products, um, which is a way of reducing the price on some of your products um, and then keeping those original artworks as the more expensive ones. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to move into um, section four, which is about online marketing. So um, online marketing, right? This is the big one, guys. This is kind of what we're what we're here to chat about today. Um, so as I was saying before, you know, um, there it used to be that. A gallery would sort of take you on and then they could go out and market your art to their potential customers but so much more now it's about the artists putting themselves out there and you know trying to attract customers directly to them um, and you know one of the big advantages of that is that if you can build up a bit of an audience or a following or you know some engaged people that are interested then you know you've got you've got that kind of audience and so you can continue to keep growing that continue to nurture it um, make art and then you know hopefully sell to them as well so one of the things that's probably the, the first thing that is really important um, is to have a website and um, you know for some of you who don't have a website this might be quite a stressful thing to think about um, it can kind of be, um, yeah, be a little bit daunting really. Um, but you should know that artists have a huge advantage in making a website. And that is that all of our stuff is just really visual. You know, it looks beautiful. And we keep producing this content that looks beautiful. Or, you know, looks looks like our art. So whether your art is beautiful or not, um, who's to say? But, um, you know, we have an advantage, so we're going to keep on making content. You know, those people who, you know, think about an accountant or a lawyer, you know, they struggle to come up with really interesting images for their, for their online presence. And so, um, yeah, so effectively what a website is, is just like a gallery for your art. And, you know, what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to say, Oh, just go check out my website and you want people to be able to go oh cool I'll jump on and I'll search you know I'll find your website and I'll be able to look through and see some stuff about you so one of the things they're going to want to see is your story you know the about page on your website and that is that is your chance to tell your story to talk about where you've come from you know what we talked about earlier um, and then the other thing is they want to just see you know lots of examples of your work so your website, think about your website as your portfolio. Now, there are lots and lots of free um, websites that you can get. Um, you know, WordPress, Weebly, um, Wix, um, or starting with W for some reason. Um, there's a whole lot of free ones which are, which are really good. What I will say is do pay to get the domain name. And the domain name is just the web address. So for me, it's joemcmenamin.com. For you, it'll be whatever yours is, um, whatever your your brand name is, okay? And you can buy the .com or the .co.nz or the .org or .nz. There's lots of different options. Um, and you kind of want your website to be called what you think people are going to be searching for. So my recommendation is your name because if they kind of know your name, they're going to search for it and it's going to pop up. Yeah, um, and don't expect for your website to get really much random traffic. You know, people aren't going to be able to find your website online unless they either search for it and they know your name, or it's linked in with some other 
different places and we'll talk a bit more about how that how that works as well um, so buy the domain it's usually about 10 or 15 dollars a year you have to keep buying you know paying for the subscription um, you can buy it just through whatever website you set up um, it's really not hard what what I do is try and so I've got a WordPress site um, I try and do um, keep it keep with the really popular ones because then if you're having a problem you just say you go to Google and you say how do I fix this how do I add a picture to my website and on WordPress and then there'll be heaps and heaps of tutorials about how to do it and you just go in and follow the steps or videos on YouTube about how to do things so there's so much cool stuff if you get like a really not very well known one then it can be hard to find those those videos okay um, all right so you make a website how's it gonna look <laughs> so this is this one's um, quite important you want to have nice bold impact so you want your website to load and boom there you are not too much text not too many crazy things going on one big beautiful photo your best piece of art right there okay um, I've got a slider so it slides between the different kinds of art that I do and um, and then you want to be able to scroll down and see sort of more stuff that you do underneath but you want that first thing to have impact so when people go to a website um, they will um, often uh, there's like a thing called a bounce rate where you basically go and if it doesn't look like something you want to look at you just leave just bounce off um, and so yeah you want it to have impact and to draw people in you want to have um, a good call to action so people need to know how they can buy your stuff so um, having a shop on your website is a bit harder and can be you have to sometimes pay for that function so if you're going to be selling things directly or you just have an inquiry so you know you can have an inquire about this artwork and it sends a form and then you get an email about that um, I have a shop so I sell a bunch of prints and products and things like that on there people can't buy original paintings on my site they can look at my paintings but if they want to buy it they have to get in touch with me because it, it might have sold or um, you know it might not be available for some reason or, or whatever um, and it's hard I don't want to have to keep updating all the time when I make a new painting and, and, and having to put it up on the website okay um, so a call to action so I mean if you want to see what I what I my website looks like just search my name Joe McMenamin um, and it's joemcminimin.com and you'll see some of my art you'll see the menu that I have and then you can scroll down and sort of look at the way that I do it cool I'm not saying it's perfect but I'm just saying that's like an example of what you can do um, have a little bit of depth in your website as well so a few different pages and even a few blog posts I'm really not a blogger but I have got some older blog posts that are there so if you go in and you want to spend some time going through some of my older older stuff you can see there's a bit of depth to it you don't just want to have a website that's like one photo and that's it there's nothing else to do cool okay so if you haven't already got a website I want you to do that um, my question for this is what if you do have a website what do you host it with you know what how did you build it do you find that easy or hard we'll have a discussion around this um, in the zoom meeting okay all right next is my next big one is Facebook now Facebook has definitely been my most successful social media platform um, and Facebook is think about the audience it's kind of an older audience you're not seeing lots of young people teenagers and in their early 20s it's mainly an older an older kind of platform um, which is fine because those people probably have more money anyway um, one thing that's super important so if you don't if you don't have a Facebook page at the moment I want to explain the difference for you okay so there's a thing called a profile and a page and they're two separate things so your Facebook profile is like who you are it's your name your photo you know you're gonna put your birthday on there you're gonna have friends that um, you connect with and all of that so that's that's just what you have to do to be part of Facebook but your Facebook page is a separate thing okay so my my profile is Joseph McMenamin um, and we might be friends we might not be friends 
I tend to only be friends with people I really know in real life because, you know, it's a bit weird to be friends with random people. But then I have my, my Facebook art page, which is Joe McMenamin. And anyone can like my page, my Facebook page. They can like and they can follow. And that's, that's just my art business or my art, you know, thing. So I'm only going to really post about my art on that. Sometimes on my profile, I'll post like a holiday or, you know, birth, kids' birthdays or whatever. But that's separate. And don't, uh, and my advice is not to share between. Because when you first start up, you'll have more friends than you will have, you know, followers or likes on your page. Don't share the post between your profile and your page. It's better just to, you know, maybe you could invite all your friends to join your page at the beginning. But after that, let the page do its own thing and have its own thing, okay? And your job really with that Facebook page is just to nurture and grow that audience. And that will happen over time if you do certain things. It will grow and it will grow wider and wider and wider outside of people you know into the random you know, world, the online world. Um, and that's really exciting to kind of see that happen. Um, you may or may not sell things directly through your Facebook page. I have sold a few pieces, but but not as many. It's more really about building an audience and building uh, a network of people um, so that you can kind of market to them, but sort of grow it as well. Okay, so you're not going to be able to go like, okay, cool, I've got this new painting, here it is. Um, and expect like five people to say, oh, I want to buy that. I want to buy that straight away. It might happen like that, but it's more likely not to happen like that. Um, so what's important for your Facebook page? All right. So the first thing is to maintain a tone that fits with your brand. OK, now that this is why if your brand is you, your personal brand, then that's that's pretty easy because you're just saying this is me. I'm an artist. This is me making art. You know, and try and stick to only posting things that relate to, you know, Joe McMenamin, the artist. Um, that could be me drawing, me painting, me being inspired by things that are for my art, anything that's sort of part of my art business. But not family holidays, not pictures of my pets, unless they're inspiring me to make art. Um, you know, not too many random, random other things because if People see lots of random stuff, they're just going to not be interested in, you know, in following along. Keep it consistent and keep it kind of on brand. What I try and do is try and post every two to three days um, and definitely don't leave it more than a week. Um, people aren't generally, like people aren't waiting around for you to post. So they're not sitting there going, oh wow, Joe hasn't posted for a while. You're just not... In their mind you're not visual to them so no one's no one cares that you're not posting but um, don't don't if you haven't posted for a while don't come back and say oh you know oh, sorry I haven't been on here for ages um, you know you probably missed me or whatever no one's really thinking like that people are just um, reacting to what they see in front of them but if you post every two or three days or every week you're gonna get you're gonna build up a consistent um, connection in people's minds about the things that you're doing. You're reinforcing your story. You're making this piece of art. You're doing this thing. You're getting inspired by this thing. So it sort of slowly, slowly, slowly builds up and up and up. And what I've found is that people start off going, oh, that's, that's a cool thing. So they might like my page for something cool. Um, and then you go, and then they kind of go, oh, wow, that's really cool as well. Oh, I can imagine that, you know, I could, that would look cool. Or that would be a great gift. Or, and then after like a couple of years, people are like, oh, you know, I've been following you for ages. I really, you know, I'd love to um, get a piece of your art one day. You know, and then it's like, oh, wow, this piece has come up and it's my favorite bird and it's the perfect thing. So it sort of builds up incrementally like that, if that makes sense. So try and consistently post. Now, it's really important to not to just always do sales posts or posts that you want something. You know, so sales post, for example, is sign up to my newsletter. 
buy my piece of art. Um, you know, uh, share this with your friends. Um, those things where you're requiring someone to do something. You can do those things every once in a while. And I would say probably every, every say, fourth or fifth post could be one of those kind of posts. If you do that all the time, people are going to be like, oh, they're just always trying to sell me stuff. Um, and so they'll unfollow you and they won't want to kind of do it. All the other posts, but so one and five say like that. All the other ones, the four out of the five, are literally just, here's what I've been working on. I've just finished this mural. Check it out. Um, this is my latest idea for a painting. What do you think? You know, um, so something where they can kind of admire your art and, and they can just appreciate it. Because lots and lots of Facebook posts are trying to sell them stuff. So if they're seeing like someone selling something, someone selling something, and then they see your art and it's just like, hey, check, it out, check out my art. You can be like, wow, that's really cool. And that will make them more likely to want to like it, comment it, maybe share it, and maybe not. Maybe they just appreciate it and then they move on. And then the next time they see it, they appreciate it again and then they move on. So I guess, yeah. Don't try and be too, um, too salesy. Um, now, there's another option. Uh, oh, so there's a weird thing called an algorithm with Facebook. And that is that, say you have 100 people f that are following your page, that like your page. Facebook's not going to show all 100 people your post. In fact, they're going to show probably one person or maybe two people your post. And what happens is that Facebook puts it out to a small group of people and then as a test and then if that if people like it quickly or engage with it like if someone if they put it out and someone says wow this is so cool and then even if that person says hey mate you know, they share it with someone hey check out this cool thing then Facebook goes oh wow this is really interesting and engaging they'll put it out to another five people and then if some of those people share it, it'll go out to another 10 people. So it grows and grows and grows and grows like that. And so Facebook only has your attention for a short amount of time. If you're scrolling through your newsfeed, you know, you're not going to see every single post from everything that you follow or every friend that you have. You're only going to see, you know, a selection of things that Facebook thinks you care about and that you want to see. So the more engaging, the more interesting your post is the more Facebook will spread it out to your, you know, to your followers of your page. Now you can bypass that by boosting the post, by paying money to advertise it to your people or to other people. You know, you can advertise to random people as well. But what I would say with that is, unless you just want to dump heaps and heaps of money on it, it's not worth it unless you've already got a post that's doing really well. So if you put up a painting and you say, hey, I've just finished my latest painting and you're getting more likes and more comments and people are sharing it, then you might go, oh yeah, this one is worth putting $20 on. I'm going to boost it for $20. It's going to spread wider and then more people are going to be able to see it. And the more people that see it, the more people will then like your page and spread it further and potentially amongst all those wider people, there's someone who might want to buy it down the line okay but don't just put a post up and then boost it straight away because if it just sits there and sits there and it's not very engaging it's just going to be a waste of money okay now there's a couple other things Facebook doesn't like it if you put words in your picture because they can't tell what they are so they don't they don't want words in there so they want a straight picture or a short video or something like that um, yeah um, the other one that I've only just started doing in the last week and a half, if you've been following my Facebook page, you would have seen me do some of these live art classes. And um, they've just gone absolutely crazy, like so crazy. Um, and so um, I think what happens is a lot of people, um, well, Facebook really likes the live function and it, and it puts it out to more people. And then because people can comment and they can like it and share it and all that kind of stuff then it just gets spread wider and wider and wider and wider and that's that's kind of what happens if you eventually if you um, go wide enough it's called a viral post and that's when it just gets out of control 
and you know you, so many people are, are sharing it but it's really hard to manufacture that I mean in my case I just randomly was teaching an online art class at the right time during lockdown for kids and it just hit the hit the button really well um, but I think there's something there if you do want to get into some art teaching or some art demonstrating you can set up a live camera and you can live paint in front of the camera um, it's a little bit nerve-wracking because <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen but um, it can be a really good way of growing your audience on Facebook okay that's all I'm going to say about that um, although I will just say Facebook can be a good way to kind of first connect with people and then send them off to your website from there so people can click on your Facebook page and go oh let's have a look at their work and there's a website boom or you can even have a shop directly on Facebook where they can buy stuff so those are good connection points um, all right let's talk about Instagram okay Instagram is owned by Facebook it's quite a similar thing it's actually um, you know for a slightly younger age group but still not young people um, it's a really visual kind of um, visual social media platform so if you don't have Instagram it can be a really good one for artists because it's all about photos and videos it's not about the text and so um, you um, you know you just basically have a have a, a feed that you scroll through and you just kind of see lots of pictures so on my Instagram I follow a lot of artists I follow a lot of people that inspire me and I find it is quite a good way of just like going in looking at some artists that I'm following seeing what they're doing getting inspired by their work yeah um, I have a smaller following on Instagram and that's fine I haven't really sold anything through Instagram some people find it good for that you know I find Facebook better so um, what I use Instagram for is I use it as more of a random and kind of behind the scenes kind of sharing so Facebook I'll put up finished finished works so finished paintings finished murals things like that um, Instagram I'll put up in process videos and photos here's a picture I'm working on you know um, what color should I paint the background um, or even just inspiration like here's a random bit of texture on a concrete wall that I like you know things that are um, more arty or more sort of behind the scenes here's a little look around my studio here's what I'm doing at the moment in my studio you know those kinds of things um, so you can do Instagram live as well I haven't tried it but you know there's that that you can do um, you can also link Instagram and Facebook and, when, and you can post automatically to the other one so you can post on Instagram and it automatically goes to Facebook um, and some people do that the same posts on both platforms and that's that's fine that will save you time um, another one that I've recently joined is TikTok and <laughs> I didn't like the idea of this because I'm not big on dancing um, but TikTok doesn't have to be about dancing and one of my um, one of my students in my art class told me this a 10 year old student said nah there's heaps of artists on TikTok and they're just showing like little videos of them kind of doing art so TikTok is um, really uh, a younger, younger audience. So lots of kind of um, teenagers, early 20s. Um, it's, it's all about short videos. So it's sort of like 15 to 30 second videos and you just shoot them on your phone. It doesn't need to be professional. Um, it's just like little wee things and you can, you can build it up from there. So um, it's all free as well. So you can just jump on um, and no dancing required. So if, if you want to appeal to younger um, people, a uh, younger audience, then this could be a good way for you to, to do it. And, you know, if you don't, if it's just one more thing, then don't worry about doing it. What my kind of philosophy on all of this is um, it's better to have one platform that you're really focused on and that you do most of your work on. And then the other ones, do them for fun if you want to, but don't spend ages and ages spending your life doing this. Um, because it's just you know it's not gonna be a very good use of your time the other one um, that's quite cool that's been around for a while is Pinterest and if you if you've been on Pinterest you might have um, saved boards or you know um, saved pins or whatever I have loaded all my art up onto Pinterest and it all links back to my website or Facebook or whatever and 
it's just if people find my stuff on there, they can then go to my website. So it's like a um, kind of a point of access for people. I don't really interact with it um, myself so much, um, but you know, it's there if people want to try and find me. Uh, okay, so, um, oh, and then the other one which sort of um, relates to teaching, um, or sorry, yeah, I guess videos as well, there's YouTube, so I do have a bunch of videos up there, um, but then um, one, there's one called Skillshare, so if you um, are getting, want to get into teaching online, then Skillshare is an American website, um, it's really cool, people can, you basically design a course, you film it, put it up, and then people can join up, and, and then you get paid a royalty from that. Um, so it does take quite a bit of work to film and edit and put it up, but that is another kind of, um, you know, revenue source if you want to go that way. Uh, okay, so that's that's my kind of um, spiel about online marketing. Um, okay, let's talk about some, some other ways to make money from art. Um, Okay, I mentioned it before, prints. So prints are a way of making money from art. And a print is just a digital version of an artwork, essentially. So to make a print from your original, what you need to do is you need to have it properly photographed or scanned, scanning is better, but properly photographed um, and then professionally printed. You can print them at home yourself if you have a really expensive printer and really good ink and really good paper, um, but pardon me, in my opinion, professional printing is, is definitely better. And then you just work out how much it's gonna cost you to produce each print, and then how much you're gonna be able to sell it for. Um, I sell prints myself. I have like a foam board backing and a plastic sleeve. Um, yeah. And then I just I just sell them like that on my website. Um, I do it a little bit differently. I don't make prints of my original paintings. Um, I have a whole range of doodle art prints that are separate, and I also hand color them. So I add a bit of dye, hand colored dye to them. Um, yeah, and um, you can look on my website and see the prints that I that I sell there. But those have been a really good regular source of income for people who like my art. They don't want to spend $500 on an original. They can spend $50 on an A4 print or $90 on an A3 print. And then, you know, I can frame it for them as well. Um, they can buy them as gifts. So for me, the print thing is really good as like a um, kind of a low, a low price point for people to get into. Um, I've also done a few craft markets and art markets and um, I sell prints through a few retail shops and that, you know, pop-up shops, that can work really well for that sort of thing where you have a product, you um, sell it, and you make a little bit of profit on each each one that you sell. Cool. So if you want to chat more about that, we can. If you want to ask me questions about how to do it yourself, that's fine as well. Um, but yeah, prints are, are quite a good way to do that. You can, so some people do uh, limited edition prints. And, um, you know, I have done that in the past where where I had an edition of 50, and then um, you number them all off, you know, and then, but once you've sold that edition, you can't keep producing them, otherwise they're, you know, it's not, it's not right. So what I decided a while ago, a few years ago, was just to do lower priced open edition prints, and then I can just keep reproducing them and signing them, um, and putting the year on it, but I don't have a numbered, a numbered edition. Sorry about that guys, just had to change the card. So, um, we were just talking about um, prints as one way of um, selling art without selling originals. Um, so there's a few other ways, so um, making cards, greeting cards is quite a good way of doing it. Um, it seems like a small thing, you know, five or six dollars, but um, it can be quite good, especially if you're going to do like a, a craft market or a, you know something like that. I usually... Um, throw in a card, you know, people buy a print, so it's kind of like a good way of sort of advertising that as well. Um, yeah, there's lots of other kind of products that you can do as well. Um, I made a, um, a New Zealand Native Birds coloring book, adult coloring book, 
um, which was I, I made that during the kind of craze about six seven years ago um, and that's just been a really good kind of thing that ticks over slowly um, you can do that yourself um, you can design all sorts of other things so um, so that's yeah making sort of products is one thing um, you can design stuff so um, quite often um, I'll get asked to design like a logo or a tattoo or you know so if that's something that you're interested in um, that could be something that you offer um, um, teaching so teaching is um, something that I find really rewarding I mean obviously I was an art teacher high school art teacher so um, so I had that experience and I enjoyed doing it um, but it's it, it's actually amazing to yeah, so to have a bunch of kids come in, or adults, and just sort of teach them a few skills and see what they can come up with. Um, so that's quite a good, for me, regular bread and butter, and it's a good thing about having the studio that people can pop into. Um, teaching online could be something that if you don't have a studio, but you have, you know, your phone and you want to kind of take a few videos of what you're doing, you'd be amazed at the skills that you know that you haven't really ever thought about, you know, that you could teach other people. But I would just say, I guess, it isn't as simple as just being able to do it. You do need to be quite patient with people. Um, you do need to sort of figure out ways of breaking down the skills that you have into like manageable chunks um, and different skills so that, you know, they can sort of build on them. So, but if that is something that you're interested in, maybe we can chat more about that. Um, yeah, so that's sort of another, another side thing. Um, Murals are something that I've done that have been really good. Um, you know, over in Palmerston North, the mural festival there, um, so cool. Murals are having a real kind of, um, I guess, day in the light, in the in, in the limelight at the moment. Um, there's sort of heaps of them going up. You know, Wanganui, Palmerston North. Um, we've got one um, a mural festival coming up in Fielding in February, so that's going to be really exciting. Um, but it can be a really good way of taking your art, putting it on a really big scale, and you know, and people pay good money um, to have murals at places. So that could be something that you might be interested in, in doing. Or even, even if it's not something that you want to do a lot of, it could be something that you want to try out and just um, you know, just to see what your artwork looks like at a really big scale. So that's that's something else as well. So what other ways have you used to make money from your art? Are there any others? Did any of the ones that I've talked about sort of resonate with you and you thought maybe I could, you know, try doing those sorts of things? So we'll have a discussion about that in the Zoom meeting as well and see if we can give each other some ideas, maybe chat about some of the practicalities of, you know, how to do prints or cards or, you know, those sorts of things as well. So hopefully that'll be helpful for you. I guess, so we're just going to... Um, wrap it up now going to give you the um the conclusion so um you know on one hand i kind of think about um being an artist as like this amazing con you know that i get to make art and do something that i love to do and people will pay me for it so that that's on one hand but on the other hand um you know artists are terrible at sort of valuing themselves valuing ourselves you know so often we will do things for exposure or um, you know because people we want people to see our work or whatever it is so I want you to um, just take a minute and just to have a think about yourself and your whole you know your whole art practice and your whole art business and just realize that it has value you have value and your art has value and if you give it away too much or if you sell it really cheap then you're devaluing yourself and you're devaluing your art so it's really important to be able to just say yeah this thing that I've made this has value and it isn't just about how long did it take you and how much did the paint cost and how much did the canvas cost it's actually about all of your previous experience as well as your understanding of the world and your understanding of your style and you know to be able to create something that people have an emotional connection with. And yep, they probably want to put it on their wall and enjoy it. But people also want to connect with you and your story. And they want to be part of your kind of journey ongoing. 